Hello, I'm Nihal Arthanaika, and welcome to Jamal's House Festival, The Highlights, in partnership with SBTV and YouTube. After a two-year wait, Soho House's legendary house festival is back. Alongside my good self, a stellar cast of presenters, including Joe Wiley, Roman Kemp, and Victoria Jane. So, with live music, backstage interviews, and some seriously juicy jerk. It's an extra special one this year as we celebrate the life of Jamal Edwards MBE, DJ, music entrepreneur, and of course, the founder of the music channel, SBTV. Now, Jamal was also the inspiration for the Jamal Edwards Self-Belief Trust. And if you want to donate to that, you can go to SohoHouse.com. Now, before all of that, two very important questions. What is Soho House Festival all about? And how did we get here? Well, to answer those questions, Mr. Soho House himself, Mr. Nick Jones, speaking to the brilliant Joe Wiley. So nice to see you here, sitting down for once, not wandering around. Well, uh, it's, 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 thank you for doing it, Joe. Oh, I'm always happy to be here. Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm, I'm been, it's such a privilege to be chatting to you, because I watched you at Glastonbury. What a brilliant job you did there. Thank you very much. I remember seeing you when Sam Smith was playing at House Festival a few years ago now, and people were talking through his set, and I was apoplectic with rage that they were talking. I remember saying to you, he's going to be really big. And, uh, you know, and he was. It worked and he was. Right. We've had a few of them over the years. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. mean, the lineup is incredible each and every year. It's so, so good. But it hasn't been on for a couple of years. So, how are you feeling about the return of House Festival? Well, always a bit nervous because, yeah, you know, we always try and get better every, every year. I think we're in a new location this year, which seems to work better. The weather's great, the lineup's good, the team do such a fantastic job on all the food and, and, and it, it, it's got a really lovely, happy atmosphere. And if you just uh, think back a year ago, where everyone was and, and what, where the world was a year ago and now we're back having fun again. Where did the idea come from? Do you remember way, way back when this all began? What well, was it, the purpose? It, it first, first happened like 22 years ago. We had Babington 24, which was a 24-hour festival at Babington House. And it was, it was a lot of fun, but it was hugely loss-making. It, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And then, and then we did Chiswick House Festival. Or it was, the House Festival came back for Chiswick House. And it was, it was very small. And, it, and we decided to do it at the last moment. And, we, and I went round, asked people if they'd sing for a cup of tea in one of the houses and we sold a few tickets and then it just grew from there. I remember seeing Jay-Z and Beyonce standing <laughs> side of stage. I can't remember who they were watching, Mark Ronson possibly. But it was a yeah, very surreal I, I think they got a cup of tea for that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any favourite memories over oh, the I've years? I've got lots of huge memories of how, just everyone just having a blast. And, you know, our members really get so excited about it. So, um, you know, some memories I can't even remember, obviously. <laughs> They're the best memories. Yeah. <laughs> and this year, you're paying tribute to Jamal Edwards. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Well, Jamal was such a big part of Sour House. He was the nicest, most decent guy you could possibly meet. He, he sort of joined us as an under 27 committee member, and he really helped shape a lot of what Sour House is today. And, you know, Obviously, you know, this is a tribute to him because we love him. Yeah. And if you were going to plan next year, who would be your ultimate headliner? I have to ask this question. Who, who have you not had that you are desperate to have at House Festival? <laughs> well, we know our friend Rob Strigger. He never helps me out, <laughs> but it would be Harry. <laughs> Harry Styles. OK, the call is out there for Harry Styles. Nick, thank you. OK, thank you, Joe. Thank you to Nick for taking time out to talk. Time for some music now. So let's go to the performance stage here in Gunnersbury Park and check out the mighty Waves Rush In. Sometimes 
even with your friends round You don't know what to say You can see behind your eyes now You're no longer afraid to feel the pain Don't Time to catch up with some musical greatness in the form of Becky Hill, Sports Team and Fatboy Slim, who are in conversation with Joe Wiley and Roman Kemp. It's the best of backstage banter. I mean, it's lovely to be back at a festival, isn't it? It is lovely back to be uh, being uh, uh, communing with people in any shape or form. Yeah. Like festivals particularly, yeah. It feels, yeah. Like, it feels like we're we're finally all back together again. I tell you what, when I first started playing gigs again, the, the levels of like abandon and, and excitement escapes were through the roof because everyone being cooped up. Yeah. And if you think one of the reasons we do this, we sort of commune through music and we kind of let off steam, yeah. there was like a lot of steam to be let off. So the first six months of being back, you could just see people just take it. It was like three New Year's Eves rolled into one. They were like really <laughs> going for it. And here a sports team, fresh off stage, nice and sweaty, smelling sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what were your expectations coming here today? Well, we've been told a lot about the food, um, yeah. and that has actually been ridiculous. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that was the main expectation, and it's delivered. How did you find the crowd out there today? Yeah, fun, man. Everybody's really up for it. As you say, like, the weather is beautiful. Um, so it's like proper nice festival vibes. It's good to be back. How do you pick your set? You know, you're, you can either, you must have to try and see how quick people can peak. I would like to put the drum and bass section. Usually I have a section when I've got a longer set, yeah. and I, I put that right in the middle so that people can kind of really go for it at 170 BPM and then I bring them back down to like 120 and then it's kind of like from there on out, it's everybody's still up for it. So yeah, it's good, it's good. You've got to warm them into it. What do you always take with you when you're on tour, when you're doing festivals? Is there one thing that you need, like refreshment, food, whatever it is? Probably beer. Beer. That's our trusty companion. <laughs> Actually, me and Rob have got quite like a sad, we share a room usually when we're like out on tour. We've got quite a sad vitamin routine now. So it's you? like, you know, you get those, like, when, you, when you get a bit older, you get those packs that have like Monday, Tuesday sort of thing. We <laughs> swap got a vitamin. Box. <laughs> <laughs> so be like, a couple of cod livers rolls, like, give me some of the iron. Three oh, of them this morning, you probably did like 12 pills light up for us. Rock and roll and vitamin I just have a kind of crate of things that I think might work. Yeah. When I arrive, I then look at the crowd and think, all right, yeah. Uh, 
that's probably not going to work tonight. We go, you know, right. go. So, but then it's just a sort of a list of things, weapons I have in my arsenal. Yeah. And aside from like the normally the beginning and the end, I kind of know what we where yeah. I know where we're going to end up and where yeah. we're going to start. But what happens in between is uh, is up to both of us. Amazing. Hey, well, look, dude. Go out there, have the best conversation with the crowd ever. I will do my best. (laughs) It's going to be one of those drunken ones tonight. (laughs) So this year's house festival is dedicated to honouring the inspirational Jamal Edwards. We caught up with his mum, Brenda, and his friend and collaborator, Ed Sheeran. Jamal was a little boy from when he was born. He was born crying, and he was born crying and smiling at the same time. Um, And... He loved to laugh and he just loved to get involved with everything. But he, he loved to get involved with things, but he would also at the same time stay on the outside and have a look in and just soak everything up. I used to buy things for, for him for Christmas. He'd use it for my, like four days a week and then that's it. I wouldn't see the present again. And then he said, well, I'd like a camera. I was like, ah, hold on a minute. And my first thing was, well, I bought you all these, these things and you never use them. I'm not spending four or five hundred pounds on, on a camera and you don't use it. He, he found one that did the things that he needed it to do as standard. And so I was like, OK, if you promise me you're going to use it, I'll buy it for you. And I bought it for him and he was the happiest. He was, he was just, his grin just went from ear to ear. He came running downstairs one, one evening. I was downstairs watching the telly. And he came running downstairs. Mummy, could you come upstairs? Come upstairs. And I was like, OK, Jamal, what's up now? And he says, oh, I've just had this person that sent me this. What do you think of this? And that, that time, it was Ed that had sent him something through of him performing. I says, oh, he's got a really nice voice. It's very unique, very unique sounding. I've not heard anything like that. Are you going to do a video? You should do a video with him. I first met Jamal at uh, I Love Life. January 28th, 2010. I mean, I'd been following uh, SBTV videos from like way, way, way back. He had tweeted something and I'd replied and then suddenly we were in contact. He'd seen a video of mine that I recorded at Jake Gosling's studio. And yeah, we said we'd meet at I Love Live. We met there. I just got a tap on my shoulder and I turned around and it was Jamal. He would give me updates on what was happening with, with Ed and, you know, Ed's doing this and Ed's doing this gig and Ed's doing that gig. And, and Ed's got a phone call from this record company and Ed's got a phone call from say Elton John. You know, it's, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, was like, I, I had no idea the scale of how much he achieved in such a short space of time. It was, it was almost like he went from that to that in 10 seconds, it felt like. It was, it was really quite crazy. But I think the, the main thing for me, because of the speed of how it happened, as a mother, I was always still, please just try and keep your head together, keep your feet on the ground. Every great UK artist was, was on it. Maverick Sabre was the first one on there with an acoustic guitar, and then it was me, and then the A64 was sort of like birthed. And then for any artist, be it rapper, singer, um, gu- guitarist, what, whatever, it was the thing that, like, if you got an SPTV F64 or A64, you'd probably get signed. I really admired him for doing that because his empathy that he had for these young people to just try and give them some confidence and to boost their confidence and to get them to believe in themselves. I don't know where that, that came from. He, it was just him, it was just his makeup. There'd be some times when he'd say to me, my friend, there's a friend who's not got somewhere to stay, can they stay at the house? I was like, Jamal, you can't just open up the house for everybody. Okay, yeah, fine, fair enough. How long are they gonna be staying for? You know, it's, it's and it was, he was very hard to say no to because he was doing something so nice. It's, it's, it was, um, you know, how, how can you say no to that? I lived at his, I mean, Brenda will say, I, I lived there for like, for like a while, like for a while. And I would get in from a gig and I would crash out and he would be editing videos until like five, six in the morning. And then he'd get up at nine and then we'd leave together and he'd go to like Margate or something to go and shoot like five different videos. And I'd go off and do something, reconvene again. And he would just be up every single night, just uploading, 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 uploading. And um, that is work ethic, you know, that's, and if you work hard enough at something, um, it will happen. It's, it's the self-belief thing. He believed in himself and he believed if I work harder than everyone else, 
my company will be successful. And, and it was. I swear, if he could have had the house as a, a homeless sanctuary to just let everybody come, he, that would have been, that'd have been ideal for him. I guess that's why it was so important to him and, and he left those wishes um, in his will. He wanted us to focus on the homeless um, for the young people um, and with, focus on mental health issues and also focus on helping to give young people an opportunity where they wouldn't see it. And so um, that's why I set up the Jamal Edwards Self-Belief Trust. Self-belief as in that was his motto, that was his, that was his mantra. You know, people, people say SB, I say Sean Brendan, that's how I christened him. He'll say Smokey Bars, that was his rap name. Then it turns into self-belief. I think Jamal has always been like such a beacon of hope for any young kid that feels like, where do I fit in? He showed kids that like, no, like if you work really, really hard at what, at what you love, all you can need really is your phone. You have a camera on your phone and maybe that's the only thing you need. I love the fact that he'd just give time, to, time of day to anybody. It didn't matter who you were. Um, and that was the beauty of him. So that's what we want to do with the trust is give those opportunities to young people that would not generally have them, um, the disadvantaged young people. When Jamal died, he was, he was 31 when he passed away. Um, so we want to offer 31 young people um, an opportunity uh, within the creative media industry to just live their dream. And that's what we're trying to achieve with the Academy. So he said, you know, to think about the mental health side of things and so we've highlighted that and we want to give cognitive and life skill mentoring to these young people before they go out into the organisations um, just to see where their minds are at and see what they want to do um, and hopefully help them to follow that path that they want to, to follow but with more of a practical side of it so that they're not faced with well you need this you need this experience so they'll get the experience at the same time as getting a qualification and at the same time with the homeless sanctuary we want to try and tackle we can't tackle homelessness it's it, it's it's such a big massive problem unfortunately but what we're trying to do is we're quite trying to intervene give some intervention so that we can try and stop as many young people as we can from getting to that phase Whenever I have memories of him, it's always like belly laughing, like real, real, real belly laughing. He used to send me just videos all day long and I go back and watch this string of videos where he's um, in St. Vincent and it's just kind of goes through his day of like, he's at breakfast and he's filming his breakfast and he's got a nice rapport with the guy that's serving him breakfast and then you see the first rum come out and then you just see this kind of day descend and it's just, I go back and watch it so much because it makes me feel like, really happy seeing that because it's just such a great day of him just like living. It was amazing to be offered this opportunity by Soho House. It literally blew me away when, um, when I was approached uh, by Nick to, um, when he said that he wanted to do this, I, I, I was kind of lost for words, got a bit emotional. Um, just thinking about it, I'm getting emotional. It's just nice to hear how much he did for so many people. And so I was really proud to be told that Soho House wanted to do this for Jamal. I mean, how do you start? There were so many artists that have appeared on SBTV. But yeah, we just wanted to um, have a few artists that uh, appeared on SBTV and have been uh, very vocal, uh, a vocal part of the platform and just people that will just bring some fun and some life, which was what Jamal was all about. It's going to be an emotional day for sure, but uh, I, just want, I just want everybody to have fun and I know he's going to be there in spirit. It's going to be a fun day and I just want everybody to, that comes to just remember him um, as a person that liked to live life to the fullest and, and had a lot of fun and was very inclusive. And, you know, it's just about everyone just coming together eat, drink, be merry and have some fun and dance the night away, which is exactly what he would have been doing. And he will be doing, I know he will be. Beautiful words from Brenda and Ed.
Now let's catch up with some more artists that SBTV have brought to this year's House Fest. With a belly, I wish I gal would no shally. Just I got the keys like a valley. Heat like Miami, free throw and a drain. Where than I got it? Um, that's a free second violation. Air pool, I'm a T say and I let it trust. So I really don't know what I hear in. Cause I'm popping so much, I feel my tire bits. Look, film it up on a mother gal, dumb a regular. Him it up on the radio or the video. See me now on a little gal, but the similar. The fear is she had the real thing. Original, hit it to be what the kitty can tell it. Hit it, hit it to ride it like a horse. Tell it, I'm a pen dollar. Got a time it to get a go 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 to get a lot. That's the only time you be all over social media. Banter. Where you rap for, where you stand for. I'll be getting your daughter can deliver me from Asta. Hamper, blacking out, looking like a panther. I'm a back on the streets of Wakanda. Rasta, I'm a bastard, be your master. Casper, be the pinang, get the body snatcher. Dash that in a crash bag, come and grab that bad girl. But a dead girl is a disaster. Actor, put a chat up, I did a scratch up, put the gas up in money. Scratch that, give him air time when I'm here. Killing all the love with my nose and my bad things. I never slowly don't have the light to be cozy. Holy moly, I swear to God, quick, gonna roll the body all and only. I've been getting him. I've been totally on the ball of COVID. Let's take a shot. I'm the goalie. Go, your team is funny. I think you know. I know you know it. And you love my money. You're gonna need more. You find it more. Let's, let's go. Let's Everybody, go, let's, let's go. go. They don't wanna mess with the crow. Everybody knows I got the flows. Man, I even ate it on the girl. Man, I even ate it on the girl. We need to get to level eight, I think, or nine, depending if we take the stairs or not. All right, let go. This is new. This is new. But I'm on my YouTube, it's called cool. <laughs> Little Darling. Yeah. Exercise. So he said hello, he called me Little Darling. Always on my phone and every day I'm calling. I just got to text him on my way, now he's calling me babe. Wanna cook me breakfast in the morning. They see me a boss and every day we walk in. Money in my pocket, I've got it all in. Smooth on and know me right the rhythm and I know they want me listen. My girl, do not get me started. So me I keep back it up, make she bad it up. She ain't amateur, Twitter got too much character. Don't make me handle her, she got stuff. Where they kind of stuff? Nobody match her. The damage you gon' hold this out like a body star. They BBC, she don't want no court, give her nigga TNC. Like a show a joke, I'm like, he he BBC. Yes, I am a queen, never TTT. Went to France, then I come to the thing. We, 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 so he said hello. He called me little darling. Always on my phone and every day he's calling. I just got the text on my way now. He's calling me back. Wanna go for breakfast in the morning? Lower that for me, please, DJ LA. So, what kind of person actually comes to House Fest? Thankfully, Harriet Rose went out into the field to go and speak to members and ask them, what is it that you do? I'm Harriet Rose, we're here at Soho House Festival and I'm going to go find out what people's jobs are. Hey! What's your name? Adrian. Adrian? That's a fake name, isn't it? No, it's my real name. Adrian? Otherwise I'd have said Jay Gatsby. Oh, oh, oh. okay Jay. This is why I'm going to guess your job, Adrian. Ready? Yeah. Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy? No. Would you consider it? Absolutely. Because I am open for offers. <laughs> and I, well, okay. 
The That's wolves the the are interview. howling. See you later. Coordinator of sexiness at Soho House Festival. I wish. <laughs> I wish. So do I. <laughs> I've got it, because I think you're physical, I think you're strong, elephant trainer. It's so close, it's giraffe. Aquatics instructor. Oh my god, bang on. I knew it! It's the top, it's the top. How's your day? She's quite quiet. Whale whisperer. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I, d I can't believe you got that first time. Because the thing is, the blue signals the whales. <laughs> You know what I mean? Velma, stop it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm trying to work. What's that dance routine thing you do under the water? <laughs> I mean, I did not expect her to actually recreate it, but snake charmer. Are you a snake charmer or not? Just like when you get a snake and you're like, oh, baby, I want to charm you. You can sing. Why are you not up on the stage? I have been begging for it for my whole life. Wow. Talk about serotonin. I feel like I'm going to be sick and also cry and also laugh at the same time. That was iconic. I'm having the best day of my life and I'm also crying. Let's get back to the park stage for some more music and drink in the joy that is Yuji. Of course, we're all out here tonight for, you know, my brother Jamal Edwards. We love him till that kingdom come, you get me? So he's not around, but you know, his legacy is too strong. And I think we, we all have a call in here to, 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 to continue what he started for all of us, keep pushing it, because uh, we all got to leave our legacy one day as well, you know what I mean? So we love Jamal. And we're gonna turn up for him today, you feel me? Nadia, what do we got? It's your boy, Easy. Uji, official. Music, so sensual. Alright. I made out of the Lazza. Are you ready? Let's go! Shocky, shocky, Mr. Baby, that's it for me. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dance it for me. And up, shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dance it for me. And up, shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dance it for me. This is the one in a million. Nobody give me one like this. Tell me I've been one in a million. Now everybody know they call me Che. I know they carry past like a billion. Well, if you give me dance, you go chop deep. Baby girl, like a billion. Well, you give me chance, one, make you two, chop deep. Three, yeah, she do G. She, she said, do you come on fire? We have body big like Bombaya. A body big like Bombaya. She said she no want no a holla. She no want no a holla. Cause she need a real man like Montana. Oh, yeah, Shata, she didn't give me kind of dance with me. I never see. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me. Shocky, shocky, we say, okay, I love it. it. What we say? She be trying to hold my hand up. Shorty says she want to do the tango. I didn't tell her she be fine all the time. When she dance, they are sweet as a mango. So wind up your waist for me, baby. Yeah, Al Qaeda, they drive me crazy. The way you kill her, that's them, I rate it. Me love your style and nobody let you go. Let's go. So let me see you, shocky, shocky. Oh, girl, make you take it low. Let me see you, take it low. Girl, move your body, body, no. Baby, take it slow. Let me see you take it slow. I swear you know. Anywhere you let me out, go. Put 
the air for phone a friend We the air for check me cause tonight it will be my go, it will be my go Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, me say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and dab. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Shocky, shocky, we say Al Qaeda, baby, dancing for me and up. Come on, come on, come on. I love you. But, but see, because I know Mummy's here now, yeah. It's not often that you get to be face to face with some of the artists that are appearing here at Soho House Festival 2022, but luckily I did. Trevor Nelson, legend hey, in this game. How, you doing, How was the set? It was fun. It was fun. It, it had to be. It had to be fun, really, because yeah. you've got all age groups. You've got a load of people having a great time. This is like no other festival. You know that. And we're here to celebrate the life and legacy of Jamal Edwards, yeah. of course. Just tell us about when your daughter came home and told you about this dude. Yeah, well, look, I've been in the game a long, long time. And you work out what's good and what ain't. And I knew there was something really exciting happening with SBTV. He came round, I met Jamal. But did you see something of yourself in him? I think there was a little bit of me, the DIY element, but as a DJ and promoter. But I never was a filmmaker. Or a video, you know, or someone who had a attitude, camera. Though. It was the attitude that I liked. Yeah, he, you know, I think for him, I didn't think it was a big deal for him, but it probably, it probably was. You know, I don't see myself as a big deal, but he's young and up and coming. This is over ten years ago, ten years ago. So, and I thought he was really cool. I just thought, yeah, and I, I thought he epitomised, he epitomised what we've seen the last decade in this country, and why black. He is exactly why black music's moved on domestically, you know, because we struggled in my time. We really struggled. The struggle was real. Yeah. Yet, they don't need record labels so much. They don't need, they just need a camera. They just need talent and they need each other. So let's go back 12 years, F64, series ah. one, episode 53, right? <laughs> if you're gonna lie, go get a bed. Ah. Right, I believe was one of the bars <laughs> that you did, right? Just talk oh about that meeting, gosh. what it was like meeting Jamal and him <laughs> believing in you. You know what, yeah. Jamal, I genuinely thought Jamal couldn't have been from London. When he hit me up, yeah, and he's like, oh, I want you to, to jump on my F64, write some bars for it, Leash, and meeting Jamal for the first time. And he's there on his own with one camera. And I'm just thinking, what? No team, no, 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 no lighting, no, do you know what I mean? I just thought he was, because I've always thought SBTV is a massive, it must be run by big, loads of people, do you know what I mean? But it was just him one up. He saw me and I saw him. Like the FaceTimes that we had in the middle of the night, both cheering each other on and lifting each other up was more special to me than like anything else. Honestly, when we, when we all got together when he passed, everyone was just like, I don't know how he managed to do what he did and have one-on-one -on -one relationships with everybody here. Like no one realized that how many people he knew that we all didn't know he knew. And he just made you feel so important and special. Like if you ever asked him anything, he's like, yep, got you, don't worry about it. And I just don't know how he did it. I still don't. He was such a special energy. Yeah, I just think he was a chameleon. And that, that's what you need to be in this business, you know? I mean, he's, he was comfortable in a council estate filming some crime MCs. He was comfortable in a ballroom with some executives. That with is Prince a very, Charles, right? that's my point. And yeah. that is, you know, well, that's what you have to be. You have to be able to be, to be in any room, in any situation and represent what you represent. And that's how we get things done. And he was getting things done. I would phone him and be like, how are you on a boat with the queen of this country and he's like you know me Jess you know is that me yeah like it was just and then he would shake the hands of everyone he saw like just appreciated everyone's role you know so he's always been the same person throughout he has never switched he's never changed he's always been genuinely helpful caring if he loves someone he loves someone doesn't matter where they're from Birmingham Liverpool when people weren't championing us now everybody loves us he had us do you know what I mean so yeah, man, I just got to give it up to J.E., man. J.E. for life.
Jamal loved a festival and he especially loved festival food. So Harriet Rose went to catch up with Brenda and Jamal's sister, Tanisha, at Juicy Jerk, a locally sourced supplier that gives you the very best in planting and chicken. We are here at House Festival and I am joined by two very special guests. Brenda and Tanisha, wow, it's such an honor to have you here. And we're at Juicy Jerk. I haven't tried Juicy Jerk yet. Well, where have you been? I know. This was Jamal's favorite restaurant. You've got to tell me a little bit about why. Well, Juicy Jerk, we met Juicy Jerk at White City House, at Soho House, obviously, and we tasted little canapes, and then we had to go back and ask to make bigger portions because it was so nice, we wanted to go back more than twice. No one needs small canapes of this. No, no one needs. No one needs small canapes of Juicy, Burke, of Juicy Jerk. Trust me, everything on their menu is absolutely fire, and we were very proud, and, and we loved the food so much that when we had Jamal's nine night at Soho House, Juicy Jerk was the ones that catered for it, and everybody, was happy everybody Jarrell what does that mean to you everything yeah. everything yeah, yeah it's a pleasure it's a pleasure literally are you guys gonna tell me the secret ingredient because I've heard this stuff is out of this world I'm I'm literally trying to wrap this up as soon as possible so that I can eat this food do you know the secret ingredient Bender nobody tells a secret ingredient that's the that's the whole thing I used to I'll be out my own brown shoe chicken and rice with, and macaroni and cheese nobody knows my ingredients because it will stay with me unless it passes through the family that's yeah. when you get to find out that's the tradition, you know? Tanisha, what do you think of Juicy Jerk? Is it, is it, is it top, top, top? Yes. It's banging. <laughs> it's banging. <laughs> yeah, literally, it's good. It's banging. Can't I complain. Can't if you've not had their food. This is the worst day of my life, but the best day of my life, because I'm about to taste yeah, it. No. You need to make sure you got some weight, because it is jerk. If you, have you, are you used to jerk spices? Yeah, I, love, I, love to, I love spice, and I do love jerk. OK, <laughs> OK. Well, wrap your lips around one of them planting with some fried chicken wings. I like also that. love planting. <laughs> Tell me the best thing that you've eaten at Juicy Jerk. The curry, well, it's hard, you know, because the curry goat was nice, the fried chicken was amazing, the fried fish. I mean, let's just go through the menu. Where do we start? Do you feel like, I feel like no one's going anywhere else today. And nobody's going, they're all queuing up. Have you seen the queue outside the front? I'm not surprised. No one's going anywhere else. Juicy Jerk is in the building. Juicy Jerk is at Gunners Berry. <laughs> Limited time only! And Jamal will be proud that we'd be here today about to taste this right now. Yeah, yeah. Like living his legacy. He'd be saying, come on, come on. That would be what Jamal would be saying, for real. And I think we should try a bit of this on camera. Let's go. Brenda Thank first. You. Hey, Tanisha. Thank you. Where's your plate, baby girl? No, I'm going to get some afterwards. We'll no, share. We'll gotta share. You've got to have some. You've I'm got going to. in. You've got to tuck in. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> No more speaking. This is mad. Oh my god, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Soft, flavours and spicy, but the perfect level of spice. Oh. Um, How do you do it? Mum's recipe, basically. Is yeah. it? So we stole, stole all mum's recipes. So it, it went down. It did go down through the family. Yeah, literally, 100 percent. Mum taught us how to cook, and literally that's what we put into the company. What the did your mum say to you to keep it so private? Was she like, I will, like. Never speak to you again if you let this recipe out. Like, try, trying to get recipes from my mum is insane because she doesn't measure anything. Like, she literally just chuck it in, chuck it in, chuck it in. How do you do that? She'd be like, literally, just yeah, freestyle. freestyle. Chuck it in. Yeah. So if any budding chefs at home, just chuck it in, babes. Chuck it in. Trust the elbow. Trust the elbow. Is it not the best vibe to be at a festival where it's the best music? Trevor Nelson's playing behind us and we're eating Juicy Jerk. I can't believe you're talking to me while I'm eating my Juicy Jerk. <laughs> because, baby, I ain't got no response for you right now. Tanisha? <laughs> It's, yeah. Final words. Good, good festival, good food. You can't go wrong. Good weather, good vibes. Final words. Juicy. Honestly, the vocals are mad. Thank you so much, guys, for chatting to me. I need to leave so that I can sit behind the counter and eat this for the rest of the day. We'll see you guys later. Bye. The music at House Festival isn't all big bands with big sets. No, we like the small and the intimate as well. And that's why we're going to head now to the Soho House Friends tent to see an acoustic set by Meryl T.
Jamal didn't just love a tasty piece of jerk chicken, no. He had a favorite tipple, and that was the picante. So let's see how you make one of those. It's your girl Tony T, and I'm here at the Patron 10, and we are about to try a picante de la casa, which is a Soho House special, and also happens to be the man of the hour, Jamel Edwards' favorite drink. So Joe is going to show us how it's made. I heard you're an expert at this. How true is that? Uh, very true, Talani. So I assume you're going to make the best picante I've ever tasted. If you fail me, what is the consequences? What are the consequences? Consequences is it's going to be the best drink you've ever tried. The thing is, I've been at Soho. Are you sure? I've been at Soho House loads of times, and just like Jamal, a picante is my favourite drink. So I have high expectations. Okay, okay, let's go. We're going to start with 50 mils of Patron Reposado. Okay. And then, and What's next? 50 mils of uh, lime juice mixed with agave, chili, and coriander. Okay, you say chili and coriander, that feels like flavours for food. Why does it work for a drink? Um, it gives a lovely savoury element to a, what normally like a delicious, refreshing drink. You have to shake it. Okay, oh my god, hold the mic, we swap jobs. How do I do it? See how she shakes. Okay. Until your arms hurt. Oh, I didn't shake it well enough because he's still shaking it. How? I'm actually out of breath. Shaking is so hard. Okay, the final bit. I'm so excited to taste this, Joe. I know we can't remix it, but I feel like because it's Jamal's day. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so thank you very much. And this is to you, Jamal. Thank you for who you are and what you did. And you made us all feel seen. Thank you. More music. And this time, it is the extraordinary force of nature. That is Jesse J.
numbers Can you feel it? Oh, I don't know if you can feel it many great acts on this year's House Fest. So many that we can't squeeze them into the highlight show. But here's the rest of the best.
just have enough time to squeeze in one more act before we wind everything up. And my gosh, what a blessing. Here's Weston. So that's it, we're out of time. It has been a wonderful house fest, don't you think? Full of fun, full of music, and of course, fond memories of Jamal, a man who changed so many people's lives and will continue to do so through his Jamal Edwards Self-Belief Trust. And with that in mind, I would like to know if you could go to SohoHouse.com and donate to further the great work that Jamal started. All that's left for say is uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next year. <laughs>